even, you know, it's funny because when you said when we met 10 years ago, that was not you. That's how I feel about myself. And I think that's how Chandra probably feels about herself 10 years ago. Because mm -hmm. it's so funny because, you know, I look at the things, the, especially the obstacles that have happened in my life. And I think, thank God for them. Because without them, I would not be the person I am today and be able to be here today and to have the confidence and all that. And you start realizing that a lot of the things that you actually think were obstacles have made you s grow so much and you're a total different person from who you were then, you know? And it's I, just amazing. I agree. I, I, I differ a little bit in terms of how I look at myself. I mean, I think I might be a little older than both of you being 50, but I think that what for me, I look at myself as um, on this journey of, you know, self-improvement. And so it is a version of myself. Like I still claim it as myself and I don't think, oh, that wasn't me. I still, you know, I, I think it's just more that I'm a more sovereign person. I'm more, I become more of myself. You know, I, I think I've um, tapped into the ability to have the strength and the courage to be vulnerable or to be able to be authentic. And I think in entertainment, that is what actually has seemed to be the thing that resonates the most with people. You know, Aaron, you going out with your real story is going to connect with people on a deeper level than, you know, just, just entertaining them with, you know, something funny or something. It's like, it's, it may even be funny, but it's based in reality. It's based on something they can totally identify with and, and potentially relate to if they went through it themselves. Yeah, you know what's funny is when I was doing comedy all the time, and of course, like the pandemic has changed all of that, but when I was doing stand up, I kept being told like to reject my femininity basically to like be less of a girl he won't people won't listen to you you won't be taken seriously like the guys girlfriends in the audience aren't gonna like you if you wear a dress and you have to be like a guy so like I kind of rejected that part of myself and would go on stage wearing like jeans and combat boots and flannels and stuff like that and I bought into that idea. I believed the people that were saying this because, you know, they've been doing this for longer than I have. Like, I'm sure they know. And it's so weird, like realizing the parts of me that I was like, no, that's that's not acceptable. That's not me. And this is going to be me now. And kind of like where I'm at now, just integrating all of it. And I remember at one point I was talking to another female comic and I was like, I'm here on stage, I'm like wearing jeans and, and combat boots, but like, I feel, I'm really sensitive. I'm a sensitive soul. <laughs> and feeling like I couldn't be that as a comedian, you know, that I just like, <laughs> and now it's like with the podcast, I get to do all of that. And then I get to like collaborate with, you know, women like you that also do these similar things and talk about similar things and also are interested in, you know, the holistic approach to being a person. And I think that's kind of awesome. I always admire people who just don't give any fucks, right? Like they just don't <laughs> care that, you know, if they want to wear a skirt, they wear a skirt, you know? And I think it's so wonderful to hear that you've embraced that, you know, all the, uh, those aspects of yourself because as we get older, we have to have a balance of the masculine and feminine energy. We can't override, you know, one over the other or we get we can get out of balance. And as as actual females you know, to, to listen to, to the patriarchy about that is sending us down the wrong road and we don't even know it because we're just wanting to trust, you know, but ultimately the trust has to come from within. So that's so great that you were able to find that for yourself and be able to go, this isn't feeling right to me. This isn't who I am. I'm not going to just, you know, be a guy. I'm not a guy. I'm not going to be a guy on stage or whatever. Yeah. yeah and you know who... Go on, Erin. Go on. Oh, I said, um, I was just going to say, you know, the people that were giving me that advice, you want just want to guess how many of them were successful women? <laughs> right? None. Right? None. None of them. Yeah. yeah. They're all men. No. Like, I think well, that's another. That's why Amanda and I are so committed <laughs> to doing this to help other women, right? We're really, that's one of the um, major areas where our paths aligned and our, and our, um, value system, you know, is that it's a non-competitive approach to, you know, supporting and helping women and through our own life lessons and encouragement and, you know, empowerment and all that type of stuff. Because yeah, you know, we don't always have that growing up and, and we need it from each other to know that, you know, it's not, we're not just going to be competitive. There's, I, I think it ties into abundance mentality. There's enough success for all of us to be awesome, you know? 
Yeah, and I think, um, you know, and I, I think in general, we are realizing that in the world, because especially with digitalization of everything, that we've realized that there's so much opportunity for everyone. You don't need any, I, th I felt like before people felt like the avenues to success were limited. So because of that, people felt like, oh, if Erin's on the way and I, no, 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 I've got to get there first. But now it's like, you can sit in your living room and even if, you know, you can broadcast yourself out to the world and you will find your tribe, you will find the people that want to listen to you, that get, you know, knowledge or they get inspired by what you have to say, you will find those people. So I feel like, especially in today's world, as women and men, we're learning to work together in a more cohesive way because we realize that the opportunities are out there for everyone. You can be in Africa as long as you have internet and you can broadcast yourself or set up an e-commerce business or, you know, no matter what it is, you can do it. You can become your own expert from your own, in your own little world and in your own little ecosystem. And if anybody thinks you should fit into a round hole and you're a square, why should you fit in that round hole? Just go find people that like squares that want to fit into square holes or like that like squares that fit in round holes. I mean, I don't know, but you know, I mean, it's like, it's such a different There's a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurs, you know, and I think that that's the greatest thing about the internet is that it's, it's leveled a lot of the playing field. And if you're not successful, um, it may be that you have to look at what you're doing or not doing, as opposed to there's limited, you know, resources or limited um, abundance, you know, of, of like only certain number of people can be successful. So if you're not one of those, then, you know, it's the, it's the outside world. No, it's what you create, what you co-create anyway. And there, and the, the, the platform's available. So that's, you know, where I think, where I think we all probably align is knowing that we're, we have to create some of our own reality when it comes to this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree with that.